Okay, everybody. I will uh, uh, summarize what we have done in the last uh, three or four weeks about enhancement of a human being. Uh, so let's uh, have the discussion about uh, what we have done so far. We kind of attended to the various components of the human being, the body, mind, mind in the context of the electronic world, and also the ego. And uh, now we are going to go into summary of all of them, but give some daily practical tips that people can do and make it uh, much more easy. Because I was listening to the World Health Organization yesterday, they were talking about the vaccine. The vaccine itself is uh, under trials and they're optimistic and the politicians are kind of misleading that they will get the vaccine right away or at the end of this year. And also the scale at which the vaccine is needed is all going to be doubtful because the, the studies that are going on are not going to be complete. They are not going to compromise on the observation period when developing a vaccine. That takes its own time. And all the people who are involved in vaccine development, they kind of committed to that. They are not going to compromise on that so that they will get a vaccine that is going to be uh, not effective or maybe producing some side effects. So they don't want to do that. And they're going to produce as much vaccine as possible. Uh, there was a question on African continent. There were 45 countries in that with a population of 1.2 billion, but they were promised 200 million. Even to get the 200 million is going to be a stretch. They have to work at it. But the question was, how can you justify 200 million to the population of 1.2 billion? They said, we're going to focus on the people who are really, really uh, sick with the chronic diseases and also um, all the first line workers who are working in the core friends like uh, healthcare workers, teachers, or um, you know, uh, EMS workers, anything like that. So uh, the chronic diseases is something that we can all do something about. So I thought we are not going to be getting the vaccine for sure, or if it comes, that's fine, but we should be prepared with a immunity and stress reduction in the human beings by ourselves. So the control has to be within each human being, how he develops his own resistance to the disease, or not only this virus, any other virus, any other bacteria, and also how he can cope up with the stress that's going to generate with this pandemic affecting so many sectors of the society. The other thing is, uh, how can we prevent these chronic diseases that is really causing uh, problems to the people who are getting COVID and they're succumbing because of the lack of control of the chronic diseases. Both ways, if you attend to the human being, like the body, mind, and interior, you can develop uh, immunity and also resistance, uh, resilience against stress, and that way you better cope up with this uh, health problems, either virus or otherwise. So that being said, uh, we were talking about enhancement of human being. Basically, my perspective I'm giving here it's like, uh, I always title this as a spiritualizing the daily life. People may misunderstand spiritualizing means I'm asking them to convert to some religion or to believe something, not at all. The one word that you want to remember throughout the entire series of these talks or this talk is awareness. You have to turn inward, that is the spiritualization not look for something outward to help you, but basically look in inward within you and be aware of what's going on. You have a tension in the body. You have a pain in the body. 
you have some anxiety in the mind or you are really depressed, anything like that, be aware of that so that you can do something about it. There are so many um, things you can do by yourself, then you can change the damage that can happen otherwise. So the one word is awareness, awareness of the body, awareness of the thoughts, awareness of the feelings, awareness of the ego and functioning, awareness of the disharmony with your family or community, anything like that. And then finally turning to what is really important in life and then try striving to achieve that. So I'm going to take it uh, into three parts here. You want to have a body that is vigorous and you have to have a mind that is joyous, not having any afflictions. And then you want to have a heart that is loving. So you, we are going to concentrate on those three, okay? So what do you mean by vigor in the body? It's like a, you have a easiness in the body when you are young and healthy and don't have any uh, particular disease. So it's not just absence of disease, which we are trying to do with the health measures, but also feel that ease, no tension in the body. That is uh, something vigorous in the body. And then you have to feel strong, vital. You can feel that when you pump up iron or do a, uh, aerobic exercise, just after that, you feel really great. That is the vitality, that is the strength with which you can encounter any challenge outward. And then also you are built up with an energy that is coming up. That's like a, a fountain going up. It's not like uh, depressed and then going down, okay? So that kind of energy will happen when you keep the body in um, flexible, strong, uh, then you feel that energy. You know what I'm talking about. And then also no aches or pains. When you have all of these components, then you can say your body is vigorous, okay? And the other thing we're going to talk about is how can you keep your mind joyous, okay? So that means you have an underlying blissful condition of the mind that is hampered by any thoughts about the past in a regrettable way or any thoughts about the future in an anxiety way. So you don't want to go from the moment into the future too much or into the past too much. You can learn from the past and then plan for the future, but you have to deal with what is in front of you present. Then you will be joyful. Also, if you have this current of thought continuous, then you don't have any peace in your mind. So you want to use the thought for the work you are doing Actually, if you are doing the work and if you are involved in it, you won't have any thought, a calm mind. We're going to talk more about that later on. And if you are contented, you are satisfied with what you have, this is uh, um, otherwise uh, what is bred in the society, like you have to be ambitious, you have to achieve and all that. You can have goals, but goals should not be in your front. The steps leading to the goal should be the one you should be concentrating on, each step one at a time. But if you are contented just to be alive, just to be able to do that work, and then your contentment comes through you into that work, then you function better. Or if you are discontent about the money, about the title, about the recognition, all those things, then you won't be joyful in the work. Then you are in the flow of the work. Once you are in the flow, you really enjoying that, okay? So that's about the mind. And the last one is, 
how can you have love in the heart? Love, as we define it, doing something for somebody without expecting anything in return, or even considering them in your heart, okay? So this is a major, major uh, um, insight in the ancient sages and the ancient wisdom, but also in the modern physics, we are all identifying with uh, oneness of all, only one energy. Once you identify that, then you don't have a separation from the other people. That's automatically you have love in your heart. So that's why this is such an important concept because constantly we are dividing ourselves. Identification of color, country, caste, religion, language, you name it. And that's why we are seeing all the strife resulting in what like situations. It could be black, white, or it could be white, brown, it could be something else. But the main thing is that division that arises from thinking that we are all different. Actually, we are not. That is the awareness you want to see whether you can get it or not. Then look at the sun. He gives everything without expecting anything in return. He never stops. So in the morning when you do the sun salutations, that is the spirit with, to which you are, you want to be in the flow of giving all the time without expecting. That is really loving. Mother gives to the child unconditional love without expecting anything in return. That is the one that feeds her. And then you want to promote fearlessness because you are the other, you don't have any fear of that other person. So you want to be in that union, then you don't want to promote any fear in anybody. So you want to promote fearlessness. So love is where you are free and you don't have fear and you are giving. So you see everybody else growing in freedom too. So you won't obligate anybody to love you, to give you all that because you understand the value of the, your own freedom. Anyway, those are the introductions of what I wanted to convey. This is my perspective. It's not like a rule or law, uh, but it's more like a how I grow to look at things, okay? Now, let's go to the vigor of the body. How do we protect or increase the vigor, okay? So, you, it starts with diet. That is really immunity and vitality enhancing diet. And then you want to be active and do exercises as needed. And also you want to relax so that the body recovers from that activity and exercise. So we talked about this uh, uh, statement, are you eating to live or living to eat? It's a big one because if you are eating to live, to accomplish something significant, that is like human being living. But if you are just living to eat, that means I'm going to make a bread and eat, and that's all everything in my life, then you are missing something very valuable as a human being. It's a philosophical statement. There's nothing wrong with either of them, but it's like a growth thing. If you are living to eat, you may realize later on, this is not it. I have something else to accomplish. Then you may come to that later. Now, this particular statement was written thousands of years ago in ancient India. Uh, they are still good. If you can check the, uh, the eight signs I'm going to describe now, see whether any of them are uh, resonate with you or a fact with your life then you know what, where is your immunity is, okay? So first of all, you have a daily bowel movement that is easy and free, and then you have no excess weight 
So um, it's not, you don't have to be obese, but you can be obese, but not excess weight. And then clear skin, absence of laziness. So laziness itself is something we talked about Thomas, that energy that slows you down, that makes you sick much easier and also it increases your morbidity, that is disease states much easier. So you don't want to be lazy. That's what their point is. And then you have a strong sense of hunger and you eat only when you're hungry. And you have to have a deep sleep every day. Deep sleep restores a lot of things back to normal or strengthens them, okay? And then, of course, you should be positive thinking and no pains in the body. So if you select all these in your life and check them off and see at least five or six of them good, that means you have a good immunity. If you have all the eight are positive and you are pretty good. If you have three or four, then you are on the verge. So we talked about this too in the uh, segment where we talked about the food. We want to grow the food organically. That means there are no chemicals, insecticides or chemical fertilizers or any of the sprays that has harmful chemicals, okay? They have worked on these. If you look for them, you can get uh, fertilizers and success that are organic too. You can do that in your own yard with compost fertilizer, okay? And then gardening itself is very good for you to feel good inside because you're growing life, you know? So these are various foods. We talked about these berries, avocado, kale, citrus foods, and nuts, uh, sprouting broccoli, garlic, um, pepper, spinach, mushrooms, turmeric, papaya, yogurt, ginger, all of them. So actively try to see that these combinations is there at least a few times a week, then that will definitely help you to increase your immunity and the vitality. Of course, when you prepare the food, don't prepare food with um, anxiety or agitation or depressive thoughts. So those kind of vibes will go into the food. That is the, um, that is the general uh, view of the ancient wisdom. So prepare with love, prepare with a silent mind. Uh, if you go to Sadhguru's ashram, they have like a 5,000 uh, people they are feeding. So they have so many people preparing the food, but there's absolute silence there. And also, you have to have the knowledge of what's going on in your ingredients. So here, modern medicine has to be reviewed and learned from it so that you know what is harmful ingredient. So you have to have a fusion of the ancient wisdom and scientific knowledge. Then the food plan, this is a simplified food plan, but if you look at it, mostly they are fruits and vegetables in all the meals. Um, they're grain meal only one time, and that also makes it with a lot of vegetables. Grain, combine grain with three to four times more vegetables. You may question, where is the meat? That's it. If you have plenty of grains, nuts, fruits and vegetables, you don't need to eat the meat. On the other hand, if you eat the meat, there are so many other things that can happen in the gut, in the you know, cancer area. So uh, cholesterol and all those uh, problems from the cholesterol, the cardiovascular disease and diabetes and all those things can happen much more when you do this. And the other thing is, the meat can have germs. Meat can have uh, bugs in there that will be harmful to you in the long run, you know, especially when you're talking about vitality and the energy. It may be, I may be prejudiced against the meat, but that's my viewpoint. 
Now, when you made the food and you want to serve within four hours of preparation, okay? If you are cooking and then you are making it uh, uh, warm up or anything like that, it should be within four hours. That is a, that's a good habit. Instead, people make uh, food once a week and they eat it for two weeks. That may not have the vital energy in it. This is very much known. There is prana in the fresh food. If you eat uh, something from pan to plate, even an omelet or anything you make, you can feel that energy. That's much better than just uh, something stored on the shelf and for a long time, and that will lose that kind of energy. Okay. And also in ancient wisdom, they look at that food as the God because that is giving life. So people who live with a sensation of this life is giving its life to give me life, then they are more aware of what's going on. Also, when you sit down for the food, you have to sit down really and then eat and enjoy the food. Eat slowly, be conscious of what you are eating. And then, of course, you eat only when you are hungry, you know, uh, not with the TV, phone or iPad, but we are all used to this so much. It takes some awareness that what we are doing that and then reversing that. So we talked about being grateful for the food and that is the life, right? All those things you do with awareness so that your body can be active, but you want to keep the mind still. That's the key to be really relaxed in the body and also relaxed in the mind. You don't want to sit down for a long time and then watch the TV so that your mind will be crazy. This is a sure recipe of illness in the long run. So you want to keep the body active and keep the mind still. Even if you are walking, walk with a silent. That means you observe where, where you are walking, what's going on around you. Be aware of everything going on around you. That itself keeps the mind calm. Don't have a thinking session while walking. That could be a habit and then later on it becomes a, a habit that cannot change. And then I'm always talking about our biggest problem is we are putting the planet in peril. So we have to be aware of that. So we want to consume less, reduce our consumption, and then try to reuse, repair, re or recover things from, uh, um, you know, uh, being wasted and then recycle as much as possible. So just to really think, be mindful of your consumption, your relationship with things and your relationship with the earth. I can't emphasize more important statement than this in view of the things that we are doing to the planet. Now, once we have a um, body that is nourished with vitally rich foods and the proper way, now we want to focus on the activity. So if you have an active lifestyle, and that is also enlightened lifestyle, that's what we are calling for, okay? So you can have sports or, uh, you know, so many things that strength conditioning or sports psychology is there. Yoga in the gym as a sport is also very much a craze. A lot of schools in India are making yoga as compulsory. I think that's a very good idea because it's a lifestyle. It's not a religious belief. So people misunderstand that. Yoga is a lifestyle that uh, people who are living in forests and mountains devised so that they can make their body resilient enough to uh, be able to deal with those difficult conditions. So we can adopt that without believing anything or without uh, converting to any other religion. So all the activity has so many um, enhancers like a physiotherapy 
our performance and nutrition, our biomechanics, so many modern tools that we need to employ to get better. We only do that when we have a surgery to as a rehab or when we get hurt, uh, that kind of thing. But if you promote in the family active lifestyle, that is enlightened lifestyle also, which will be actually building your vitality in your body. So what do you mean by active lifestyle? First of all, we are too much involved in the creature comforts. So you have to be aware of that. Am I sitting in sofas all the time? Am I slouching? How am I dealing with uh, uh, my need for the comfort even though I don't need it? Young children are now playing video games and they are getting used to that, this kind of evil for their bodies very early. Parents are not aware of that. They allow them to stay, they become obese. I'm seeing more and more patients and I was uh, looking at the patients, uh, 10 years, they are very obese. Majority of them, they are not going out or playing or they are not being active at home. They are always sitting. That's why they are obese. The parents may give them one and one and a half hour of, um, active exercise in the morning or in the evening, but the rest of the time they are teaching the body to sit down. So that's why you have to be aware. Remember, I said one word you want to remember is, are you aware of this? And then do your stuff. Get as many household chores you can do that will be good, clean and uh, uh, you know, serve your meals or whatever, you know, and then get up and walk. It's not enough not to just to sit and just stand, but you have to walk every 10 minutes just to take a couple of blocks of walk around your office or even in your room. That will be, if you have stairs, go up and down a couple of times, you know, and then avoid prolonged sitting. We talked about this. The sitting is the new smoking, like we used to um, talk against uh, smoking, we should be talking against the city. Again, be aware. How much time are you spending sitting? Then, of course, king hikes, biking, camping, as much as you can, all that. So you divide, you devise an active lifestyle around your routines, around your work, so that you don't have to do something else. It can be fun. Go to some place where they're canoeing and do that or go to a hill and climb it, or take your bike and go around walk, or go to a, by the side of the river or the sea and walk. And also gardening itself is a very, very good exercise. You are making a, um, ready for the plantation and then you are cutting down the trees or whatever. All that becomes a lot of activity. So that kind of gardening is very good too. Of course, uh, yoga exercise, I always recommend because this can be done any age in any physical condition. That means a baby can be um, customized to do that to all the way to a very frail 90 year old too. Uh, BK Sayangar, the great uh, yoga teacher, he did yoga two days before his death. And he died around 85 years, I think. You know, Of course, any gender can do it. And any disease, we can customize that. That doesn't mean that will completely cure the disease. It, at least it will help the disease recovery better. Or it will prevent from the disease to advance faster. Okay? So any activity you have, you can enhance that. If you are running, you can do some yoga exercises before so that you won't develop cramps, you know. Um, of course, head to toe yoga is something I wrote, I kind of published it uh, in the previous talks. You can do that at any time. And you can do slow stretches with breathing if your body is very stiff. So, so many ways you can uh, customize this, okay. This is uh, sun salutations, uh, which is the best aerobic exercise you can do. Uh, the more number of times you do it, the better it is for you, okay? And then, 
what I want to tell is instead of making a special session and not able to keep up with it, you can do uh, simple things that you can incorporate into your daily activity, which can be as yoga. Get up. When you are waking up, you can do some stretches. They are also there. I refer to my previous talk. And then when you are taking a shower, have a vigorous rub. And then while you are driving, you can do neck and back exercises, as I showed them. And also you can do breathing when you stop at a light or taking stage. And then if you are walking long walks in the corridors of the hospital, that's what I used to do. I used to focus on my breath very slow, deep breaths in and out, three or four times is good enough, okay? And also office yoga, you can do stretches for your neck and the back and also your extremities. Sitting in the chair, you can do a lot. So you don't have to devise special act. If you want to do that, it's good. But if you don't want to do it, just to see where is the tension building up in your body during the day and then relieve it with stretch and breathing. And now, what is this enlightened living I'm talking about? I'm not talking about enlightenment in the traditional sense. That is going to come later. But what I'm talking about is, suppose you are eating some particular food. You want to know about that food. What is known to the science or our understanding? <laughs> Is this uh, something good for my body constitution or is this something I'm going to develop uh, allergies like that? Or is this oil is going to increase my cholesterol or not? That kind of awareness into whatever you're doing is very important, okay? First see, are you conscious in every activity? Are you there? Are you completely with it? That means, are you in the present? And also, are you doing things that are in line with your values? So knowing what and how to do anything and applying it, that is the enlightened living I'm talking about. But there is a different enlightenment where you transcend your own mind and know who you are. That's the bigger topic. We're going to address that a little bit uh, later on. But then they have three steps that they described. And reflect on it, think about it, question about it, come to conclusion that is really true. Then once it, you know that it is true, then you have to say, is it real in my life or not? They are called Shrevana, Manana, Nididhyasana. So not just reading a good book is enough, but you have to think about that book, see the conclusion, see the recommendation, and think about it, and don't believe it, question it. Once you are convinced about it, all you have to do is, is this real in my life, or I'm just listening and going? A lot of my times, the people I'm talking to, I'm addressing and all that, they listen, they say it's very good for that movement. And later on, it doesn't come into the life because they never spend time on that, seeing is this real or not in their life. Okay, that's what I'm talking Again, awareness. Okay, I listen to something. A lot of people repeat all these mantras, but they don't know what the meaning of that. So they're not getting any benefit of that. Okay, so that's why listen first, question, think and do that, don't believe it. And then once you are convinced that is true, see whether it is real in your life or not. That is the enlightened living. Like you, you heard that this particular food is bad for the diabetes. If you are not aware of it, you will eat more and more of it and that will get worse, that kind of thing. So actually enlightenment means choosing to dwell in the state of presence rather than in time. It means saying yes to what is. This is very important for the mind also because you are in the present. You are not in the past with all the regrets and all that. You are not in the future with all the imaginary fears or plans, which are not real. You are not missing what is life, which is the present. That comes uh, once you have a good 
vitality enhancing immunogenic diet and then you have exercised so that your body is flexible strong then you want to relax the tensions okay so first of all do you need unwinding if you are not winded during the day which i'm going to talk about when you're working what you can do to see that you are not accumulating this tension during the day then you don't need unwinding because there is nothing wounded up at the end of the day right otherwise you need to really take a break and relax that relaxation is going to be restoring your energies okay there are simple things you can do sitting in the chair have a body scan from head to toe just to start with the toes contract and relax be your focus on there take a relaxed breathing like that you come to the legs the knees thighs abdomen chest head and neck and the limbs uh, arms both arms so that's a very simple thing you can do if you do it on the floor lying down that's the best uh, thing suppose you are doing a, a good yoga uh, session at the end of the session we always recommend that people do this cops pose shavasana where you relax from head to toe completely and that is a very very important thing not only the body but also you have to suspend the mind all the thoughts and whatever going on in the mind okay so that will be very helpful for you to take away the stress as it accumulates every day actually in the relaxation these are very practical things i'm going to tell you which anybody can do it uh, you want to see how your day ends and how your day begins okay actually the day starts the night before in the sense you want to prepare for the day but then write it down put it outside your mind on a diary and keep it away then some of the mind hacks also help you to relax you know what do you do upon awakening these are the small things i'm talking about anybody can do it you can let your devices awake after you so you don't want to go to the even before you completely awake you are still groggy you want to reach the phone avoid that okay let them sleep for a while I mean uh, just after you awaken don't go to them give them a gap even for the thoughts to come into your mind that's the i thought springs up and immediately attaches to whatever role you have and then you'll be running and then you cannot really get hold of your thought okay at the time you have to think about it think about an elevated thought that will help your energies to go up okay and then first hour is very crucial upon awakening use that to get familiar with the tensions in your body tensions in your mind and try to reverse them okay and don't touch the electronic things uh, this is the detox people are going through because they see the bad effects on their mind on their family so people are getting used to the electronic detox okay and then once you have done the day and then you are ready to go to sleep at the end of the day what you want to do is you want to relive the day's events in reverse order and put them away so that you don't carry the angers the anxieties or whatever happened in the meetings all those things in your mind and sleep take them resolve them put them away and then sleep you can put them away completely till the morning they can wait so that is a very very important thing for the deep sleep so these are small things anybody can do if they are aware so put yourself awareness mode in the morning and at the end of the day this is the shavasana they are uh, um, demonstrating here so this is uh, used for relaxation and before you go to meditation uh, this is also called yoga nidra you know 
um, basically what I told you, don't have any identities at this time. That is a night routine. People use it to make the body relax to the utmost. Now we're going to go into the second part of the lecture, which is the mind. So basically our mind goes all over with the work. So we're going to focus on the work and give you some tips that you could use to come out of the work as, as little damage as possible. So you want to work and you want to work joyfully, you know, and you want to work to achieve excellence, but then this goes against the conventional thing where you are driven, you are passionate for the work, but then you are so winded up in your mind. On the other hand, if you really know the work and if you are very calm, then you are in the flow. So that is a very relaxing for anybody. And also, if you work like this is all ours, we are all in together, there is no self-centeredness that is much more satisfying to you. And also you earn a lot of friends and your harmony with your team grows up. So you want to become a servant leader, even in a small group, so that you are serving the team, not yourself, okay? So some people uh, offer their work as a, to the Lord, and that can be okay too. But at work, you want to have a right attitude, and you want to be attentive to everything that you are doing, and you have to have the skill and the energy to do it, right? So is the work enhancing your energy or depleting your energy? If you are in the flow, it will enhance. But if you are fighting against the work and then you are doing it because somebody is pushing you, then that will be depleting your energy. That's a simple thing, but people are not aware of it. So check yourself with this mnemonic, AIP, am I in the present once in a while? Then you bring yourself to the present, then you are liberated from the mind's past or future orientation. I'm telling this again and again because most of the people are 95% of the time, either they are in the future or in the past, not in the present. So some people are very toxic and they want to gossip, they want to uh, take you away from your task, they want to uh, talk about unnecessary things or um, deplore you or whatever. And if you are a, any sort of ego, then you suffer these people, you know? Um, so you want to, classify your work into important or not important, urgent or non-urgent. Then take up important non-urgent things. You know how to do them if you use that chart and then you will be able to concentrate on the important long-term things, but they are not urgent right now. That means you are planning for something, an exam, is it nine months away, you are going to prepare in a relaxed way. That is the um, energy repleting, not depleting, okay? So this 24 hour news, all these unnecessary things are not really needed. You can be proactive about it. What is needed for me, for my life, for my work, for my family, for my country, I will be focusing on that rather than something else. Then what happens is, your energy depletion stops. That's why I like this quote from Ramana Maharshi. He said, you have to work, the alert work has to be completed in time. It is not the amount of work that's the problem, it is the other thoughts that they come in and they become the obstacles. So you have to do the work within the time, that itself is a meditation. So go ahead and do the job with full attention. Again, full awareness. So whatever you're doing, just pay attention to it. Now, Kennedy said, you have to ask a question. He said, don't ask what the country can do for me. 
ask what I am doing for the country. That also has become old fashioned now because we are a global society. So identifying yourself with a particular country has become limited too. So you want to ask, what am I doing for the world? Don't ask what the world is doing for me. This was evident in the ancient world because they were selfless. They didn't care about putting their mind, my name on the construction that they have done, which are magnificent uh, uh, evidence to their skill, but they still, nobody knows those uh, sculptures. I find that very uh, inspiring when I look at that, you know? So that's a very important thing you have to look at it, you know? And this is an example, Morris Friedman. I told you several times, I admire this man like anything because he was an epitome of non-egoness. He never wanted any credit for number of significant things he did in history. The other thing is, how are you reacting to events that are happening at work, okay? There will be arrows coming from outside, but the second arrow is how you react. That should be in real control. Again, awareness. If you are aware of your own reaction, you can control it. But if you are not aware, you will succumb to the reaction that carries the emotion, and then you will, you will be depleting your energy. If there is a criticism that is reasonable, you listen and learn from it and improve yourself. Otherwise, you will feel bad about yourself and then your energy will go down. This is another thing too. If you are helping anybody with expecting something in return, we are doing business, not kindness. So that kindness habit is something is very good for your energy. Random acts of kindness, go and help a colleague, go and help somebody on the road well, that needs help at the time uh, without expecting anything. And the, that random acts of kindness are shown to increase good hormones, good feeling all around. So make it a habit, okay? And also always pay attention to every action. If you take a project, all the steps need to be attended to. That itself feeds your energy. And then the breaks come during the work. You want to uh, stop one minute for every hour and ask this question, am I in the present? Then start breathing deeply. And five or six times you do that, you will be centered, you will come back to your center. And also, this is an important principle, delayed gratification. Uh, in ancient India, they had shrayas versus prayas. That means long-term thing, but that's not going to give gratification now, versus instant gratification, short-term thing that's not going to be significant. That's going to be pleasurable, but that's not going to improve your life. So if you are in shrayas, which is the good thing in the long-term, that suppose you're studying, but instead of studying, you want to watch a cricket match, that is the prayers, instant pleasure. So if you can delay that gratification, then you are in the correct energy. Of course, this is, uh, I talked about work, work with excellence as a goal, but don't drive the mind towards it. Have a mind that is calm. So focus in flow, and then you have fulfillment with every action. You have a win-win formula, and then you are not merchandise oriented, like a, you are commercial. So that is the problem I see all the time. Everything is oriented towards revenue, and thereby people are really losing the um, real life in their life. Of course, now is the online work quite a bit, you know? So you have to work by yourself, you have to motivate yourself, and you have to go by the task, and the task can be um, prolonging your work day. Instead of eight to five, you have to do in the midnight also. That's causing a lot of problems, okay? Other thing is, people have these egos, and they forget they are all in one energy. 
they separate themselves by identifying with their little egos and then they fight for that rather than the long term good for everybody good for all the world that kind of thing so in this uh, atmosphere people are not able to accomplish anything because their egos are coming in the way so this is something park your ego at the door in any meeting and also this is just as you wash your hands before eating clean your mind before entering the world the lot of uh, these uh, yoga practitioners they have a greeting in the morning they ask is your mirror clean they are meaning their minds so when they sleep and get up they want to have their mind completely clean so they don't carry the grudges they don't carry any anxieties so their mirror is clean so that they can receive significant truths about life in their meditation so that is something practical we can apply to so make your mind your slave don't make the mind your master that is you have to be in awareness you have to slow the thought and then replace the negative thoughts once you identify them with the positive ones and then fix the mind in the heart that means you are thinking through your heart not your analysis by your feeling you are thinking and the last one is the big one how can you develop a heart that is loving okay so this is an affirmation i try to read in the morning which is uh, what i have some little components that i want to refer about let me be in the present moment to moment with choiceless awareness choiceless that means it's not to a particular direction but in awareness that the awareness is that i am beyond the body mind complex because that awareness is the common factor that i have with all living beings and once you have that then you are like a son who wants to give and then once you are in awareness you are free of the overthinking then you are joyful in your head loving in your heart and vibrant in your body okay and then serve the world around you that will be a wonderful life now the fundamental question people don't ask is who am i and that's where this slide comes uh, this is like a chidabasa the like kind of reflection uh, the sun is the real energy real awareness real consciousness that is us and through that consciousness all our body mind complex come here the sun represents that soul and the moon represents the mind so we are always operating with a reflected light not the original light but once you understand the mind and go through it then you know that your consciousness and you operate from it this is a controversial thing in western world because they think the consciousness comes from the mind but there was so much done there is a hard problem of consciousness what is the first person experience explained by if you the mind is the one who is it that is experiencing everything so i am convinced that the other way is the right we are conscious beings that are using our body mind complexes the moment we realize that we are in charge of ourselves our bodies our minds otherwise we are the mercy of the unconscious behavior and all the problems of the body and mind are there so this is a saying in the bible i am that i am see the essence of mind is consciousness awareness like it said but when the ego that means you think you are limited body in mind and that dominates you then it functions as the reasoning thinking sensing faculty that means you are operating body mind through the ego not the awareness but the cosmic mind is not limited by your limitation of ego so it separates itself from itself then you cannot be having the blessing of the cosmic mind but if you are 
then you are only awareness. So this is a very important slide to go through. So it kind of, even if you understand to bring it as a reality into your life takes a lot of uh, unlearning. Now in one slide, we isolated ego and soul. In ego, we say me. In the soul field, heart, you say we. In the ego field one, you will say self-importance. But in here say, we are all one, we have altruism, acceptance. So you can read the slide. Do you want a head voice when you are in the ego? Or you want a heart wise when you are in the soul? So move from your head to your heart. I think this is a very important slide. If you look at each part of it and identify whether you are there or not, you can rectify yourself. You don't have to have a counselor for that. So these are some of the take home tips. I just put it there, organic food, sitting down eating, immunity enhancing foods, and exercise with active lifestyle, relaxation daily. And then mind wise, you want to have enlightened living, thought versus awareness, have a calm mind, do the activity with the joy. And the heart wise, you realize that you are the choiceless awareness and everybody else is also in that, then you don't have a separation from them. And that means you are in love. So fix your mind in the heart. So Albert Einstein, he himself is a great scientist. He said, I believe in God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of the universe. So he's the one who talked about the one unified energy. And that's the one the ancient talked about being Brahman. So everything is coming together, modern science and ancient wisdom into the consciousness. So we want to remember that. And the word to remember is awareness. Thank you. That's it for the series. This is concludes this uh, enhancement of the human being. Thank you.